Hey, hey developers, today we're going to look at Vue 3, how you can get started with Vue 3 today, even though it's not out yet. And also we're going to look at some of the RFCs that are out and kind of get a better idea what Vue 3 is all about. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. Hey, and I want you guys to know about my new course. It's called Vue 360. You can get it now at viewcourse.tech. So it's a pretty cool advanced course. I'm going over everything from Vue 3, how to get started with Vue, how to work with Vuex, how to work with different APIs, REST, authentication. It's a really big course. It's five weeks long. So I'm releasing information every single week for the next five weeks. So make sure you check it out at viewcourse.tech. It's, you know, I've been working on this really hard for a while now, so I'm really happy to show it to you guys. Uh, so make sure you check that out. The link's in the description, viewcourse.tech. All right, so as you guys know, Vue is growing and the new version of Vue, Vue 3, is just around the corner. But uh, you can use Vue today. So I've talked in the past a little bit about the Composition API. And so the first thing you can do definitely is use the Composition API plugin. This is the Composition API. Here's the GitHub for it. And what this is, is a plugin that you can install in a Vue2.x app to make it basically be able to use the Composition API in it. So you'll get things like the setup, You'll get all the reactive hooks and everything that you are used to in for the Composition API. So for example, here it is, installation, do the npm install at view a Composition API, or use Yarn, or you can even use a CDN at this point. And the usage is you just put it through view.use, and then there you go. Then you could start using it in your app. It even has uh, TypeScript support, which we don't look into, but you'll have like this reactive, you can use this uh, ref, Kind of gives you some tips here not to use ref in, in a plain object working with an array. So there's a few caveats, but this is a great way of getting started with Vue 3, get it, understanding the composition API right away. Here's the setup hook that is the new way of doing things. Of course, let me remind you guys, this is completely additive. You don't have to use this even when we Vue 3 is released. It's just another option of way of creating your Vue apps. But I think it makes sense, especially when you want to kind of put all these different features together in one place in one file. You see here's the on mounted here, the ref. Uh, I actually did a couple of videos on this. I'll make sure you guys can check it out as well. And yep, just gives all through the documentation here. So I'm not gonna go ahead and do that in this video, but maybe in the future I'll do a couple more composition APIs. So that's the first way of kind of getting your feet wet in it. And I'll make sure this links in the description. The second way is looking at Vue-next. So this is the next major version of Vue. It's a work in progress, and it's basically an alpha right now. And it looks like the biggest problem, um, well, not problem, but what they're still working on is getting it uh, server-side rendered. And uh, it has some uh, environment doesn't support IE 11 yet. So there's a few things they're working on still. Now to get this working, this is this basically will compile down to a script file that you can add to a project. So Vue, I'm gonna go ahead and give shout out Vue Mastery. They did a article uh, a while back on how to get started with this. And essentially after you download this repo, this Vue Next repo, you can run, and as it, if you actually look at the contribution guidelines, it kind of talks about this, how you do it, but they distill it out. It's essentially what you do is you can create this global, this build fat format for global, which will create a global script tag for you. So you run yarn and then yarn build view dash F global. And then if you look in the package view dist view global JS, that's basically view three in a script that you can then add in your HTML. So you do it like this. So the script source, just like you remember, you can actually do this with view two as well. I've used it with unpackage that CDN for quite a while when I was first teaching myself Vue, and I've done a few videos on that. And then you can just create your components, and then you uh, do create app dot mount, and you can do the same thing here. But now you can use the setup function, which usually is only in Vue three. So that's how you do it through Vue Next. What I find a little bit easier right now, this article I don't think it mentions it, but uh, Vue Next also recommends that there is a Webpack kind of test app that you can do. So there's a single web page space based setup with a single file component support available here. So if you click here, this is a brand 
a brand new repo. It's actually just updated eight days ago by Evan Yu, creator of Yu. And so I went ahead and downloaded that and I wanted to show it to you guys what it looks like. So here is, here's the Vue Next app, which we can certainly, if we want to build and create our script that we can include in a project. But if we want Webpack and have it all built together and use .vue files, we'd have to do that all manually through here, but we can do that using the Vue Next Webpack preview that Evan's already created for us, which is awesome. So we just need to, after you do, uh, to get this, you would do a git clone and you would clone it into your local box. And then you can either run npm install or yarn, and then you can run npm run dev or and yarn is once again, but I'll assume that you're using npm. So if I run npm run dev, and if you look here, if you look at the package.json file to get an idea what's in here, it's using uh, view three alpha four as the dependencies and then has some scripts set up for Webpack dev server. Well, that's, once again, you don't have to create this yourself. And then it has some CSS loaders, file loaders, just some stuff to play around with it. Uh, view loader, so you can use .view files and it does everything for you, so which is awesome. So if I do npm run dev, it'll run, pack, it'll run the Webpack dev server for us. It compiles successfully and now it's running in localhost 8080. So if we look at localhost 8080, cool, hello view three, click zero time. So it's running, we're basically running the latest version of view three, alpha four apparently. If you go to the source, this is what it looks like. It just has this main file and it's, oops, don't worry about this area slint. It's grabbing create app from view and then it has just a, a .view file and it's just loading it and it's mounting it at the .app ID and so here's what it looks like. So here's this source, the logo, which is this, of course, the view logo. And then a click, which counts, has a, a count variable. And this at click increments increment. And here is the composition API. We have the setup. We have count here, which is uh, it's reactive. And then we do count.value, increments it. And then we're returning count and ink. So those are be able to use in the template. Cool, so let's say we wanted to add our own component. So we should be able to play around with this here. So I'm gonna go to source. I'm gonna create a new file. Hello, eric.view. And then I'm going to just create a new empty file here. By the way, that's a snippet that helps me do that. Hi, this is Eric. And now I should be able to import that in. So I'll do import hello eric from dot slash hello eric dot view. And of course I have to set it up as a component. Okay, so now I should be able to add it right into my component here. So I'm gonna import hello, oops, hello eric from dot hello eric. And now I have to create components object, which hello, Eric. And now I can add it in. Oops. Now I should be able to add it in here, which will be hello, Eric. Cool. So now we'll save it. And we got to make sure we put dot view at the end here, or it'll give us an error, of course. And now, cool. Hi, this is Eric. So you can see now it's showing up on here as well. Cool, so yeah, that's how you would use uh, the latest version of Vue 3 if you wanna play around with it. Now, uh, one other thing is if you go to Vue Next, if you kinda wanna get an idea, that actually links to the RFC, the merged RFC, so you can kinda get an idea of what is gonna be in the latest version of Vue 3. And now we've all talked about composition API and a few other things, but like there's gonna be some minor changes to the transition API changes. They're trying to remove filters, remove inline templates. There's some component vModel API changes. From my recollection, recollection, most of the changes are internal, but there's gonna be a few changes, especially like if you're using functional render components, there's a little bit of slots unification, like tree shaking, you're probably not gonna use that. Um, so yeah, you can kind of take a look at this. It's interesting that they're removing filters. So that used to be a feature. Looks like they're going to be removing it. 
And then you can look at the discussion of, you know, the pros and cons and getting rid of each one of these. So uh, I hope you guys like this, a little quick preview and uh, how you can get started. So make sure you check that all out. And if you guys like this video, click that like button, share with your friends. Thanks, bye.